With intuitive recording, editing and publishing features, Hindenburg has all the tools you or your team need to begin podcasting with your new vocaster. When open, you'll be introduced to your default session, where you'll see your workspace, toolbar and track controls. Before you start creating and editing, make sure your vocaster is set as Hindenburg's default input and output device. Select Tools, Options, and a small options window will appear. Making sure the audio panel is open, beside Playback, open the drop-down menu and select Vocaster 2 USB. And beside Record, open the drop-down menu and select Vocaster 2 USB. Ensure that the record mode is set to Auto and select OK. Let's identify your Vocaster 2's inputs. To the left of your screen, where you see your track controls, select the first track and then select the arrow to open your input sources. Here you'll see all your input sources. Select Vocaster 2 USB and you'll see two options, mono and stereo. Mono inputs. Having selected mono, the inputs you want to be using are as follows. Input 5, your Vocaster's host microphone, shown here on the back panel of your Vocaster and shown here within Vocaster Hub. Input 6, your Vocaster's guest microphone, shown here on the back panel of your Vocaster and shown here within Vocaster Hub. Stereo inputs. Having selected stereo, the inputs you want to be using are as follows. Inputs 1 and 2, video call left and right, is your show mix from Vocaster Hub and what you hear in your headphones and speaker outputs. But this is with loopback ones left and right channels removed meaning when used with Squadcast, Zoom and other similar applications, your remote guests will not hear themselves, removing any chance of feedback or echoes occurring. Inputs 3 and 4, Show Mix left and right, is your show mix from Vocaster Hub and what you hear in your headphones and speaker outputs. This show mix left and right channel can be recorded into a door, allowing you to record your show mix as a stereo recording, not having to mix your show later. Inputs 5 and 6, host microphone and guest microphone, are your Vocaster's host and guest microphone inputs combined. This would be both host and guest inputs being used simultaneously recording a source in stereo. Input 7 and 8, auxiliary left and right, is your Vocaster's auxiliary external input, shown here on the back panel of your Vocaster and shown here within Vocaster Hub. You can use this when you connect a phone to the rear panel of your Vocaster. You can adjust this input from Vocaster Hub and it will adjust the audio level being received from the phone. Any volume changes you make from your phone will also be matched on Vocaster Hub. Inputs 9 and 10, Bluetooth left and right, is your Vocaster's Bluetooth input source, shown here on the back panel of your Vocaster and shown here within Vocaster Hub. You can use this when you're streaming audio wirelessly from a phone or other Bluetooth-enabled device. Inputs 11 and 12 and 13 and 14 are your Vocaster's Loopback 1 and Loopback 2 channels, shown here within Vocaster Hub. These two inputs control the level of up to two audio sources generated within your computer. For example, audio from the internet, like YouTube, or pre-recorded audio files from media sources within your computer, such as Apple Music. In this demonstration, I've only demonstrated each input on track one, but the previously mentioned inputs are available on all tracks. For example, when selecting the second track, and then selecting the arrow to open your input sources, Select Vocaster 2 USB and you'll see two options. They're available here again. And so on.